Okay, um, hello everybody and welcome to the second talk. First of all, thank you Jessica for the first one and also thank you for your laptop, uh, it's not mine. Um, I will talk about full stack testing and uh, my name is Robert. Um, Katharina, our user experience designer, is uh, sitting over there. Uh, you can find me on GitHub and also on Slack. Uh, I'm at Ro Schäfer. So, I will quickly just sum up uh, what we are doing. Um, so, we are internet activists. We want to um, create participation and transparency in public broadcasting in Germany, and we are creating an app for it. And that's an app where you can um, like broadcasts. We'll, I'm going to show it to you later on after the talk. So, um, full stack testing. Um, I, it's actually my first time here at the MRGS meetup and also the first time I'm giving a talk about MRGS and also the first application that I wrote in MRGS. So if my knowledge is not very profound uh, regarding MRGS or JavaScript in particular, feel free to uh, yeah, give me a hint and stop me from telling bullshit. Um, second thing, I found out that I'm actually making a lot of assumptions. So um, we are developing a single page app. So we are doing the assumption well, you want to do Ember.js and you have a backend and you want the backend to be Rails and you're making uh, an application for end users. I hope at least that parts of this talk will also suit you and your particular use case. Um, so, who has seen the testing pyramid already? One, two, oh wow, three, four. So, that's not very much. I will quickly describe what the testing pyramid shows. So, the testing pyramid shows the different layers and the different types of tests, software tests. So, for example, you have unit tests. Unit tests tend to be small, they are fast in execution and they test only one particular piece of your application. Whereas, for example, full stack tests are large, uh, rather slow, and they test the entire application. And they also test the application from, if you do uh, an application for end users, from the user perspective. So the, the test sees the application through the same interface like the user would do, which in our case, since we're doing a single page application, is the browser. Um, you can see on the left side and on the right side um, some icons. I want to express that if you go down the testing pyramid, tests become fast in execution. And if you go up the pyramid, the quality of the test increase. So, since you will test many parts with full stack testing, if just one of those pieces don't expect, don't behave as expected, that will probably reach the full stack test and it will fail. So you can be very assured that if you do the full stack testing, that more things seem to work. And in our particular use case, because we have a front end and a back end, this testing pyramid is also divided in, in the middle. So we have um, unit tests for both the front end and the back end. Also integration tests and even acceptance testing. We can do acceptance testing with MBGS. And since MBGS is just back end agnostic, uh, you would use um, a mock API like Mirage. So what we are going to talk about now is the upper part, uh, full stack testing. That means you test the entire stack, so you um, manipulate the browser, the front-end will issue requests to the back-end, the back-end will respond to the front-end and the front-end would, for example, display a result. And that's what you would you test and where you would um, make expectations. You have to keep that in mind, it's important, this diagram. And I really love to start with a full stack test. If I have to do the, implement a new feature, I always, uh, let's say my customer comes to me and wants the application to work in a certain fashion, I will write down what he wants me to do as a requirement. And I will use that requirement as the starting point for a full stack test. 
And this whole procedure is called specification by example. There is a very famous framework for specification by example, and that's called Cucumber. And the reason why it's called Cucumber is, you can see it on the right side, you have different steps, and as soon as these steps are implemented, they turn from red to green, like a cucumber. That's actually our log from Travis CI. And um, as I said, having your tests, um, having your requirements, uh, defining your test has certain advantages because you use your tests also as your documentation. And it's always a good idea um, because you can execute your tests and your documentation and they will always be up to date. If you do documentation on, with text only, you need to make sure that you maintain the documentation. If your tests are your documentation, whenever the application gets out of sync, the test will fail because the application behaves differently from what the tests are specifying. Does that make sense? And Cucumber adds one layer on top. Cucumber is just the framework for writing natural language for your tests. Um, so you can actually use either German, English, French, whatever suits you, your team or your customer best and um, create a test from it. And the, you will just write the glue code between natural language and certain methods implemented in your favorite programming language. So, I told you about the user requirements and there's a certain way how, you, how I do it and I think it's a good way to do it and that's um, writing down requirements as a user story. You can see the default template over here. So I also use GitHub and I use GitHub as the issue tracker and I would for example use the title of the GitHub issue as the title of the feature and then you have um, this template and the template defines, okay, who wants to do what and why. And the why is very important because that will explain the problem to the developer. And it also displays or expresses the value of this particular feature. Um, why do you want to create this feature? It's, it's something that all people forget to explain the actual reason why you do this. And we are going to implement one Cucumber feature, and that's this one. So, um, I'm a developer and I want to explain things, and for explanation purposes we are going to, um, we have a scenario where we have a backend, we have a secret stored in our backend, and we display that, for example, to registered users only. And you have the test case down there, so uh, first of all you make sure that the, the secret is in the database, and it's only accessible to the local local users, and then say, okay, give me I'm logged in, and we visit the landing page, and I can see the secret. Fair enough. Now, one thing before we start, um, I told you about Cucumber. Cucumber is often confused with Capybara. Capybara is just the test runner that will open the browser and challenge your web application through the browser. So, um, Cucumber is the natural language thing. Capybara will, we will use Capybara because we're using web applications and we are not developing a command line tool, we use a browser in order to. The, the browser would be the tool how a user, a human being, would use our application. And we have to um, do certain things in order to set it up. So we have a front end and a back end, we start both servers and wait for them to boot. And we want to set up, um, we want to do the test setup. That means we probably want to um, write entries into the database. So that's why we also load the Rails environment that gives us access to the database. Who actually has a Rails background? Quite a lot, okay. Um, and finally, we tell Capybara to watch localhost uh, 4200 where our front end is um, running. Okay, we're going to do this now. I uh, hope this is going to work. We are using this editor. 
So this is the feature. I already pasted it. And I will just quickly show you how the actual how a directory layout could uh, look like. So we have a photo backend with all the backend with our backend application and API. And we have the front end, that's where we have our AmberJS application. <coughs> if you want to do cucumber testing, there's one magic folder, it's called features. And that's where all our features go. So, um, there, that's our feature we want to implement. That's, you can see it on the left side. There's one, there are two magic folders inside this feature folder. The first magic folder is called support. And we'll see a certain file here. And that's how we set up Capybara. You've seen the slide before, and we are doing just this in uh, the environment RB. So that's, for example, the place where we load the Rails environment. We are now in RubyLand, and we require that file, then it can write into the database. And um, here we, for example, say, OK, Capybara, open the browser on localhost. 4200. Now, so we are now in this on the terminal. That's the the top level folder, and we can now run the command bundle exec cucumber and give the path to the to our feature, which is feature full stack feature. Okay, and then we'll see. There's a browser opening up. That's the first landing page. Hopefully we can actually see something new. Yes. And that's it. More or less. Mm. Mm. Okay. And what we see here, that's the output of, of our test. So every sentence in English has to be implemented with code. So some of them are already implemented, but there's one step that is not implemented yet, which is this one here, which is uh, turn uh, colored in orange. Uh, but Cucumber is awesome because it will give us just the code that we need in order to define those steps. This, this one here, and we can just copy paste that. That's what we're going to do. I hope I can actually copy paste code from the terminal. So, uh, control shift C. Control shift shift C, and then we open up the step definitions file. It's in step definitions steps. And then now we'll see if we can actually copy paste code from the terminal. Yes, we can. So think of it as a method. Uh, Whenever Cucumber will see, I can see a message, blah, 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 it will run this code here. So this string, by the way, refers to this string. So those two go together. This is, you can think that this is the input of this step definition. This is the message we're talking about. So. When we want to expect that we see a certain message, we could, for example, just say, okay, I want this message to be visible on the, on the, on the website. And we can say, for example, expect page to have text string. That's it. And we will run it again. I have uh, written the file. I'm not quite sure. We'll see. It's a little bit annoying that the browser spans up the entire screen, so we cannot see uh, that Cucumber does one thing after another. And I didn't write the file. Forgot that one. Control S. Go for it. can just move the browser to the side. So, 
there you can see how Cucumber is uh, executing this, the, the, the feature. So, now, finally. Now, this is red because we didn't implement it right yet. Okay? So, uh, Capybara is telling us, I couldn't find this message anywhere on the website <coughs> that displays, uh, for debugging purposes, the entire text of the page. So, anywhere in here, we cannot find uh, we can, this, this secret code. And we're going to change it. We have a front end. And for simplicity, I would just mock it up. Usually, well, um, I'm, I'm now just mocking and pretending that would be data that is um, that's coming from the back end. But you can, I mean, just imagine that would be now a model or something. Um, hash. That's pound symbol. So it's not US layer apparently because uh, shift in three would be hash. I just want something like if. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's just. What was? What, I didn't. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. If a session is authenticated. Whoa! What's happening? Aided. The answer is 42. Hopefully. Anything wrong? This looks okay. We don't have syntax highlighting here, which sucks. But I can even like debug it. Ah, anyways, how we can. It will only be visible for a very short time. So, that, did you see it? No. There we are. Now. Okay, so the, this cucumber test was green really now. That's the whole point. Okay, so this is how you would write cucumber tests with AmbiJS, which is great. It's a great tool. Um, it is. Um, it's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, I wouldn't give this talk if it would be that easy. So, um, there are some problems related to full stack testing. And um, one is it's sometimes very difficult and set up to set up and maintain. But why is it so? So, if you do full stack testing, you're, t you're testing a lot of things. And probably you have a lot of dependencies. And that's a problem. One of those dependencies might be external requests. And that's what happened to us in our, in our case. Mm. We migrated um, our user authentication to a third party service, which is somewhere outside on the internet. It's called Auth0. Maybe some of you have heard about that one already. And if we have our build server, we're just testing our application. Then we have control and access to the front end and the back end, but that one up there is still somewhere outside on the internet. We don't want external requests. We don't want, exter we don't want external requests because we create a lot of traffic, it will slow down the test suite, and they are error prone. If you just have, don't have, for example, internet access, the test will fail. So that's a big problem. Who has an idea, like, what would, what, how would you kind of tackle this problem? It's going a little bit more interactive now. So, um, you've seen this problem, um, you have this external request here, so if the user, I can actually show it to you on, on, uh, online. Um, ooh. So, <clears throat> come on. If the user clicks on login, you will see a widget. This widget will then authenticate the user with Auth0. And Auth0 gives the user 
a token, a JSON web token, and that JSON web token will then be sent to the backend. Has anybody an idea? Maybe Franz, how would you try to stop all this external request? What would you do in the Ruby land, for example? Just walk it. So something uh, have something as a substitute and point the system towards that, having a local. Yeah, I was also thinking about that. Um, or just return what you expect. Or yeah, yeah, that's actually something we're getting closer. So in Rubyland, I would, for example, use VCR. VCR um, kind of records requests. So as soon as you have a request to the outside, that request will once really reach the target and it will record the response and the next time the same request will made it will just play back this re already cached response okay with well, that's a ruby gam so in capybara since we are using cucumber ruby and capybara we are kind of in ruby land we are on that side and vcr doesn't work for us because we would we would probably stop all external requests that the backend uh, does but we are here in our JavaScript context because that's a JavaScript widget that, that will open up uh, when the user clicks on login, what you just seen. And we cannot stop out this request. There is actually something. There's another game called Puffin Billy, and that hacks the entire browser and proxies all requests and um, records them, and then you can play it back. And I tried it out, and it actually works. So. You can, indeed, authenticate once, record that, put that into the repository, and then it will be played back also on, on the build server. And it worked, it made the, the test dream, and also the build server was doing fine, but two days later, the test was read again. Because this authentication server, this JSON web token, is having an expiration date. Yeah? So, the backend was not accepting this um, expired uh, JSON web token anymore. So I thought, hmm, what can we do? We could actually do something like make the, make the backend believe it's two weeks ago or something, when the JSON web token was still valid. And it's also possible. There is a game called TimeCop, but at that point I thought to myself, well, this is definitely not the way to go. Too much complexity. With, I'm doing something wrong here. Um, and thankfully, I found a solution. I also want to encourage uh, to shout your ideas to me. I will give some, uh, uh, some hints, let's say. So the security in this uh, whole procedure comes from the fact that the auth zero server and the backend server knows a certain secret. Of zero will encrypt the JSON web token, and that JSON web token will be decrypted on the backend side. And if that works, the backend knows okay, this user was actually authenticated. Has somebody an idea how we can kind of accomplish, or how we can stop, we, we can cut off this external request and still have a valid JSON web token? I have a question. Yes. In, in the Rails environment, yeah. you, have, you have three separate environments. You have production, you have mm -hmm. development, you have testing. And you can have your code do something different depending on the environment. Under Ember, do we have something similar? Yes. So you have the same, um, the same uh, concept uh, like we have in Rails in Ember. So for testing, of, of obviously you want Rails to be in testing environment because otherwise it would probably delete out your development database, and that's not what you want. Um, and you also have environments for Ember, and you're pointing into the right direction. Because the solution to all this is to somehow modify certain pieces that do deal with authentication in our testing environment. So the Ember.js application is a little bit different, but only for or, or testing, and that's fine because we don't want to. We, we just assume that this works as expected because the guys of Auth0 have developed it and tested it, should be uh, fine. Um, we, so we just at that point make something different, and I will show you how the 
method to authenticate actually looks. So in front end you have authenticators. We are using simple auth. Maybe some people of you have heard about it. And that's how it looks like in production. So there is this auth zero log. That's just a widget that you just seen. And it will be shown as soon as the user clicks on login. As soon as your user has authenticated himself, the JSON web token will be stored in the session and that will be played back to the backend server. So if we kind of hook into that, maybe that's the solution to this whole problem, and it is. So in our integration or testing environment, we do so just a little bit different. That's it. So we can access a certain global variable. For example, we could use window and um, just make this front end believe that it is authenticated already. And by writing on the consoler, so the consoler, I mean that one here. In every browser, we have access to window. And we can, uh, uh, we can assign anything to window. We can say uh, foo, and then later on access that one, and we get back the result. So we can somehow prepare our front end uh, with our mocked JSON web token. We could actually use the authenticator to take that and play it back to the backend server. And that's what, what we did. So, uh, Come on, that's the different authentication method. You just uh, write into the window. And um, if you want to see how it looks on the back inside, this is it. So that's the, the token that we generate for a certain user. And then we execute JavaScript inside the browser. We can actually do that and assign that token to something that we can use in the authenticator. <laughs> okay, that was a tricky that was a tricky one. It took me a week. How do you switch the uh, authenticators for testing? You can switch the authenticator um, with these environments. So when I start Ember with environment, we call it integration, um, you can say that it should use a different authenticator. That's actually possible. Yeah. Um, just one more thing, I will, I will debug that one, come on. So um, in our step definitions, we have a certain method and that's called, <coughs> come on, login. I'm, I'm interested if that actually works. Sometimes binding prime on, on other machines doesn't work as expected. So uh, binding price uh, will open up a console where we can stop the test and, and XMI uh, for debugging purposes. Come on. Hello. So that didn't work because I didn't um, press Control S. <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm a Vim user. I normally just do colon uh, W. There we are. So we're at this particular step, and then we can just check 